Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My last two videos have all been about many-to-many -many relationships in Canvas apps, both with a actual many-to-many -many relationship and with an intersect or a junction table. Today, I wanna to talk about how to use these many-to-many -many related records in Power Automate. Let me go and switch to my screen and I'll go back into this Canvas app that I've been working in uh, the last few weeks with our many-to-many -many and with our junction table. So again, here we have uh, all the students and a quick form, and we have all of the classes with a quick form as well to add and update classes, add and update students. What I wanna say is when the start date for a class changes, I wanna find out all of the students that are related to that class, and I wanna send them an email. Now you'll notice all of these students have my email address that's done on purpose, so I don't bombard people with fake emails. But let's go ahead and jump into Power Automate to see how we're gonna find the related records to whatever item here changed. So switching back to my solution, I'm gonna go and create a new automation, and we're gonna do an automated cloud flow. And for the name, I'm just gonna call this something simple. And the trigger here will be in Dataverse. And it will be when a row is added, modified, or deleted. So when that class record changes, we wanna go and find all the related students and email them individually, notifying them of the change. So first we'll say, this could be modified. And the table name will be our class table. And the scope would be anyone in the organization. So anyone that makes a change to this record. Now we got to our first problem, which is how do we get those related records? If we try to do a new step and we look for Dataverse, the only thing really having to do with many-to-many -many relationships uh, in the Dataverse connector here for Power Automate is to relate and unrelate rows. So we can relate and unrelate rows, but how are we gonna actually find the records that are related to this record that's changed? So there may be a more complicated way to do this where when this row is added, modified, or deleted, you know, we might be able to ex like get that row and expand the query and do some fetch XML and a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way to find these related records. We're gonna go back to our solution. I'll just open up a new tab for this. All right, now that we're back in our solution, if you watched my many-to-many -many video a few weeks ago, then you remember that when we create that many-to-many -many relationship between student and class, you can pick either, either table here. I'm gonna go with the student table. And let's go to the relationships and let's find that many-to-many -many relationship. So we can just search through it here to find it, or we can filter by many to many. And that should return just our one relationship, the class student many to many here. And if we click on the display name, it'll open up this properties panel. If you remember, it creates something called the relationship table name. So it is going to generate a table behind the scenes. Again, it's not a table that we can edit or add columns to, hence why we use junction tables. But because we know that we have a table in the background that we might be able to tap into, let's go back to our Power Automate and let's do a list rows. So now it says, okay, which table do you want to list rows from? And we want to list rows from that virtual many-to-many -many table. But what is that table called, right? If I try to search here for student, I just have the student table or our junction table. Same thing if I search for class, right? How do we put in the actual name of that table if it can't find it here? Well, we can click enter a custom value and then we can just type in the table name. So when we type in a table name, it does expect a logical name for the table. So what is the logical name for this virtual table? Well, let's go back to our other tab here where we have this many to many panel open and the table name again is right here, the relationship table name. You'll see it's called M2M underscore student underscore M2M class. So the one table, M2M underscore student, 
and then M2M class. So those are my two tables and it creates a table that smushes those two logical names together. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's go back to our flow. Now the table name will be M2M underscore. And then what I have on my clipboard here. So that's the table name. Now you will get a failure if you try to run this. It will not be able to find that table. The trick here, which makes this so easy, is to just add the word set at the end of this. So M2M underscore student underscore M2M underscore class set. That is the name of our table. So let's go ahead and before I run this, I just wanna say, okay, I only want this to run when the date column changes on this class table. So let's go back to our solution and I'm gonna go back to my class table and I want the logical name for my start date field. So if I go to columns, I go to the start date and I can go to the dot, 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 go to advanced tools and then copy logical name. So I wanna only run this when that particular column changes and let's save this and give it a test. Let's see what we get back from this list rows action. Now that it's saved, I'll go ahead and test this, do a manual test. And let's go back to our Canvas app here and make a quick change to the start date of one of these records. So let's do the math class. So here we want to say the math class, the start date was October 9th. Let's go ahead and make that October 2nd. So we click OK, submit class. We go back to our flow and it is running. Let's see if it succeeds. All right, so it was able to list the rows from that virtual many-to-many -many table. Now let's see what it gave us. So if we click to download the outputs, this is what our many-to-many -many table looks like under the hood. So we wanna go down to the value part of this JSON to see each of these records. So in the value we've got for each of these, we have a class ID, which contains the GUID for the class. And we have a student ID, which contains the GUID for the student. We've also got some other stuff here, like what's the data type. We also have a GUID for this virtual, you know, many to many relationship record. The first thing we want to do is filter this many to many table to find only the records here in this many to many table that contain the GUID for the math class, right? The math class is the one that changed. So remember, we have this M2M class ID field. So it's M2M underscore class ID. That is the name of this field in this table. So I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. Let's go back to our flow. And on the show advanced properties, we'll add an OData filter query here. And we want to say where the M2M underscore class ID is equal to, so EQ. And then we want the class, so the unique identifier from the record that changed to kick this flow off. So, so the class ID is equal to the class. Now let's save that and we'll do another quick test here. And before I test it, let's go look at our many to many app. And we'll go to this and let's see how many records should we get here. So for math, I've got one, two, three, four, five students. Of those five students, we've got, okay, that person doesn't have math. We've got Roberta, Joanna, and Nate are all taking math. So this filter query should produce three records. We're going to do an automatic test. I'm going to click to download the outputs. I'm going to go down to the value section and you'll see we have one, two, three records found. Perfect. So now that I know I found the table and I found the correct related records that I want, now all I need to do is add a new step and we're eventually going to say, we're going to apply to each of these rows that comes back and we're going to find the student 
right? Because remember, all we have between these two records is the GUIDs for both. So we have the class GUID and we have the student GUID. So now we need to actually go get that student record. So we're gonna get a row by ID. The table name here is the student table. And the row ID is gonna be our dynamic content from the list rows. So it's gonna be our M2M underscore student ID. That will automatically apply to each. So that's gonna give me things like their name and their email address and all the metadata that I have about that student. And now all I need to do is add an action and then let's send them an email. Now who this is going to, we wanna use dynamic content and we're gonna use the student email field from the get a row by ID step. The subject here could be start date for your, and then we want the name of the class. So when a row is added, modified, or deleted, we want the name of that class. So we'll say the start date for your math class has changed. And then I can say, hi, and then I want the name from the student table. And we can say your name from the trigger action. So your math class has a new start date of, and we can add in now the start date from when the row is added, modified, or deleted. So. Let's go ahead and save this. And we'll give it one final test here just to make sure everything works according to plan. So again, what I should expect to see is I should be getting three emails right now, all from myself that basically say, hey, Joanna, hey, Roberta, hey, Nate, your math class has a new start date. So let's actually do a manual test this time. So we'll wait for it to go into a waiting state. And then I'll go back to my Canvas app. I'll go back to the first screen here and let's edit our math class. And we'll say the new start date is 1016. So we click OK. We submit the class. Let's go back to our flow. And it's now applying to each student related to that class with that many-to-many -many relationship. Here we go. Hey, Joanna Johnson, your math class has a new start date of 1016. That also sent to Nate Hallowell, and it also sent to Roberta Johnson. So quick and easy video today, quick and easy solution for how to find that many to many relationship in Power Automate. Hopefully this is helpful and helps kind of round out your understanding of many to many and how to leverage them uh, across the Power Platform, not just in Canvas apps, but in Power Automate as well. Thanks for sticking around and hopefully we will see you in the next video. Take care.